So uh, welcome to the Afterlife Book Club, Michelle. I turn it over to you. Thank you, Gary. It is such a delight to see all your faces and to be here tonight. Um, I, I wrote this book um, and published it in 2016. So it's been out for a while, forevermore, a love story from the edge of eternity. Um, and I just, it's lovely to be able to talk with people who um, find these ideas inspirational and filled with hope. So thank you all for coming. And I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I have been um, a writer since I was uh, old enough, I guess, to pick up a pencil. Um, my inclination was always to write down little stories. Uh, I wrote my first newspaper when I was uh, 12 years old and I had joined a drum and bugle corps, which was a fun activity for me and my friends. And I wrote that, that was when I wrote my first newspaper. And from there, I, I high school newspaper and uh, in college, I was a writer for the college magazine. And I just kept following that thread, but I never planned to do it professionally until by accident, I got a job as a copy kid at the Buffalo Courier Express, which Mark Twain worked on when he was a young man in Buffalo. So I was a copy kid and it occurred to me because I had my foot in the door that perhaps this was something I could do as a career. And I immediately changed my major from um, phys ed to uh, journalism and proceeded to follow a career that is um, something that I, that, I, that I feel like I was born to do. It's funny that it took me so long to figure that out. And from there, my, my path, to this particular topic of life after death and, and um, human potential began as a young journalist when I, I got my first, one of my first assignments was to cover a woman, she's a psychic, and she was teaching blind people how to feel the energy of colors with their hands. And I was so delighted to have this be a story that I could write about. And I went back to the newsroom where it was, it, was like, it was like a football field and there was, it was filled with smoke. It was the most interesting place to be, but um, filled with a lot of skeptics who, um, um, uh, who didn't quite take to my story. I remember talking out loud at the city desk to my editor and saying, oh my God, this story is so great. And this columnist who I so admired came walking by and she said, that woman ought to be in jail. And... Um, and as a cub reporter, I was like, uh-oh, I, I must have believed. And, and apparently that's um, something that journalists aren't supposed to do, is to uh, believe these kinds of crazy stories. So I went on to write a story that was a little tethered by the opinion of my veteran columnist friend. And uh, it wasn't my best work because I, I, I was just stunned, first of all, that people wouldn't think this was miraculous. In any event, the newspaper, I worked there for a total of about 10 years, and the newspaper ended up closing, and I sought this psychic out, and um, because now I had all this free time, I had to figure out what to do with the rest of my life, and I was going to write a magazine story about her and her work, and she invited me into her classes. It was a series of classes she was giving to a whole group of everyday people, a race car driver, a businesswoman, a married couple. And she, she proceeded through the course of, I think there were two, there was a week long course and then another week long course, which I was going to just observe and write about. And in fact, she kind of insisted and reeled me in to engage. And we were all practicing psychic behaviors that she insisted we all could do it. At one point I, held a set of keys in my hand and was able to describe the, uh, the man who, who, owned, who owned the keys. And in another case, I flipped over a picture. We exchanged pictures and I could, I could describe um, who the woman in the picture was. And oddly enough, I've never used these skills. I don't use them a lot, but that experience taught me, A, that we all can do far more than I think we think we can as, a, as a, a, the human race. And, um, and secondly, it, it empowered me as a human myself. It wasn't like I was going around holding people's keys, but I understood that, 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 I, that, I, that I knew more than I thought I did and that I should trust my instincts more. And 
that kind of set me off on my journey to learn more about the meaning of life. But I was also at the same time, I was a young mother and I was very close to my own mother. And I realized, because it wasn't ever going to happen to me, but I realized someday she might die because that's what people do. And I knew, I knew that, but it was impossible to wrap my head around it. Her death, my death, anybody's death. Um, and so I proceeded to go off as I said, on a search for the meaning of life, but to explore this thing called dying. And so I I started, of course, with a pile of books, Elizabeth Kubler-Ross and um, uh, the book of the Tibetan book of the dead, which, you know, it was, it was just all, it was like, it was like a box of chocolates and I kept pulling them out, trying to see if I could find the answers and proceeded then through the course of my life to, as I'm sure, all of you have just book after book because I, first of all, I couldn't believe there were so many books like this. And second of all, um, they made me feel good. I couldn't get over how the idea of death could be described as something more beautiful than people have words for. And, and in this, at the same time, I had gone back to journalism. Again, we're talking the course of, you know, 40 years. Um, And I, so there, there are a couple things you need to know about that is that, A, being a journalist, um, the kind of journalist I was was that I, I was always drawn to and was given the stories of these wonderful, courageous humans, inspirational stories, great stories about people doing wonderful things. So my worldview is really optimistic. It annoys people sometimes, but I always say, like, you know, Newspapers are supposed to tell you the bad news, but you really don't understand it. I feel like I had the only job in the world where every day I would meet someone doing wonderful things, giving of themselves or creating something new and marvelous. And, and um, so that kind of, that kind of um, helped me to understand that, that things are never quite as they appear, and they're certainly never as dark as they appear. And, and I, then I was determined to find a project that I could use my skills as a journalist to somehow influence the world and get that message across. But that's a really long story. And there's even more about dealing with uh, all this, um, this new um, uncertainty about the ethics of the, the media, because I am a print journalist and I, I have worked with so many people, so many journalists who take their work very seriously. And um, so it all, it all, that all kind of created who I am. And in the course of all these books I was reading about death and dying, I like to say if someone ever found my cell phone or looked at my Kindle, they would think I was the daughter of darkness because all of my books are like, you know, what, what really happens when we die or, or um, 10 minutes in heaven, you know, all of those books. I'm sure that the same could be true of all of you is that I have lots of books about where we go when we die. And the thing that puzzled me the most as a journalist was, okay, so I have a Kindle loaded with these stories and my, and of course the paper, paper books as well. And people are still don't talk about death. They're terrified of it. Um, They don't think it's ever going to happen to them. Like I felt when I was a young 30 year old. And I, I thought if I could just find a story to tell much like Richard Bach, who wrote Jonathan Livingston Siegel, of course, and the, gentleman who wrote the Celestine Prophecy. These are books that really changed people. Even, and, and you may have not necessarily understood, you know, maybe the writing wasn't um, like the Celestine Prophet, Prophecy. I love because he used the storytelling to open people's minds to ideas that we are more and that we do have more potential than we think we do. And so as a result, that's what happened. I, I came across this idea. I love listening to channelers because I am mystified by how that happens and where that wisdom come from, comes from. And I, and I really wanted to write a story about somebody channeling somebody. And I remember you probably all do a Jay-Z night, I think used to walk about as the um, presence that she was channeling. I, I know. Um, um, Rom thought. Yes. And Esther Hicks, um, uh, you know, can hold the presence inside of her for an entire day's worth of, of, of like, no, she doesn't lecture for an entire day, but, you know, seminar long, you know, hours of seminars. And then there was um, Jane Roberts, who's Seth used to smoke a cigarette and drink a beer. And I, as I recall from, from her books, I mean, it's, it's fascinating. And I wanted to incorporate something like that in a story. 
And that that is pretty much, and then deciding, um, the last thing I'm going to say, because I feel like I am taking up way too much time here, is that Lilydale is a place um, not far from my home in Buffalo. It's about an hour and 15 minutes drive. And um, it is magical. It's a little cottage community on a little lake in, excuse me, New York. And it's a place where people go so they can contact, somehow contact their dead, the people in their lives who have died. And, and as, as um, you all may know, Deborah, especially, that um, these are all mediums who have literally taken a test to, to certify themselves as, as mediums. And there's always just wonderful, interesting things. And I, so I know I wanted to set the book there. And I did. And I, and that pretty much describes, and, and as I explained, the story was coming as I was writing it. And then I published it, self-published it. And then it, it, it has this really temperate um, response, you know, every now and then. Um, it, it's, it's definitely not in my, des- my desire would, would be for it to go further out into the world, because I do think that it's a fun story. It's outrageous. And it presents some ideas that people might want to think about if they don't know about them. And I think they, I think they're presented in a friendly, almost humorous kind of a way. So they're not frightening. And ultimately my goal would be for people to understand what I have learned and what I really hope is true because I don't have actual experience of it is that, as I said, that death is the most beautiful thing that we can experience and that there are no words to describe what uh, the extraordinary experiences that occur uh, according to those who have come back. So long story, I'm, I'm, I might feel kind of breathless from t- saying all those words, but I hope oh, I got my ideas across. That was great. And, and they always tell me there is no death. There is no afterlife. There's only life. There's only life. Are you yeah. a channeler, Gary? No. Well, who knows? <laughs> who knows? I, I, honestly, I believe I get that we stuff. all... I think we all channel bits and pieces. That's the wisdom that pops in your head. And you go, geez, that was a good idea. Yeah, I know it did come for me. Yeah, <laughs> I know the feeling. Well, let's, let's get started with some questions. Peter, you wrote me the most beautiful email about this book. So I'm going to start with you because that was just fantastic. You made my day this morning when I found that. So um, your impressions of the book and any question you might have for... Um, Michelle, so. Well, first of all, it, it was a book that I felt was real all throughout what I read. Um, I can also identify with Charlie when you first started your book uh, with Rebecca um, and how intuitive they are to see um, the afterlife. And I had a similar uh, circumstance with a uh, Down syndrome boy and uh, – I remember this one one time in particular, I was working with them and downs are very obstinate and they, uh, they're just very obstinate. So I remember all through the, the whole school year, I was a special needs aide for a Downs child, uh, Dustin, Justin. And I would always tell them, Justin, feel, feel. Well, at the end of, of the school year almost, Justin, what did Justin do with and he didn't speak a word, but he came to me with his hands up like this and said, Sheldon, I can feel. Mm. And so I really identified with Charlie and, uh, and I learned a lot about myself just by reading the book. It, it, it just seemed, I mean, everything seemed very real. I mean, it's, it's just unbelievable. It was a very good book and I read the whole thing. Wow. Thank you. That, I, I love that you say that it's real because it's all based on real accounts because, and I feel like that's kind of the way I write as a journalist. I take someone's story and I tell it as best I can. And, and while there's no actual true accounts that I didn't filter through my storytelling lens, I know that there are certainly are books that I, that I read before I wrote um, this story about children on the spectrum and how, how, there are accounts of children who are deeply connected um, to the spiritual world. And, and so I love that you have evidence of that oh. and that you think it's a real story. 
that that's a uh, high praise. Thank you. Excellent read. Thank you. P Peter, did you have a question or? I kind of uh, molded by my uh, statements with uh, questions and, and, uh, and got your answer. Yes. Very good. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Peter. Grace. Well, I would like to have Sebastian telephone number, but it's not <laughs> possible. <laughs> Apart of that, uh, I think we all want. Or, yes, me almost too. Almost all want. <laughs> ah, yeah, we agree. Um, now, I have two questions, more serious. First of all, when the second books come, the book comes, because I think I am waiting for for knowing what happens now that Rebecca is there and not here. Mm. <laughs> That's what I thing. thought about that. I thought about taking on Lilibeth's story. In fact, I started, um, I started writing it because okay. she's so gifted and because for her death is not, because I imagine her as a death doula to be exactly the right person then to, to um, kind of warm people up to the topic. Because for some reason, I've always loved to think that that death, and I'm sure you've all heard this expression, is just the up. It's it's exactly the same thing. It's it's birth. It's coming in with you know noise sometimes and chaos, but but mostly um, it's it's it should it's so it should be celebrated in the same manner as a birth because of the birth that into the next part of our lives is kind of the Wait way for I'm... the next book club. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Thank you. And Thank you. Uh, the, the other question is where, be, supposing it's not 100% fiction, the Albert Sebastian situation, what was the inspiration? What real fact was similar, if not the same, of course, than that? Because meaning... I never heard about that thing that you can go out from your body, uh, take a cup of tea, and at the same time, someone is using your body for something else. Where that comes from? Or well, I have heard those stories, and I have heard they occur even in manners of people who are grieving their spouse and making love to a substitute for the spouse. Um, the actual leaving of um, the way Albert leaves his body and goes up into um, uh, goes up into what we might call heaven or the afterlife or just the the next step, as as Gary said, because we don't die. Um, is I guess if, of all the things that would be considered part of my imagination, I just kind of took off on where Jane Roberts said she went and where Esther Hicks said she goes. They kind of move aside and they're in this spacey kind of place. So I did push that just a little further because I figured that even in it, because, because that was possible if you believe all of this other stuff to be true. And so. Um, so but in your book, that happens at the same time. Not only someone leaves the body, but at the same time, someone else is using that body. Right. And I, the way I imagine it is that that's, that that's what occurs when, when people channel, that someone's using their body and they, they have to step aside. And um, my impression of that and what occurs is, is that that is a dreamy space where, where, you, where you could conceivably go, um, go to the afterlife and is am i answering your question appropriately because yes, what I'm yes because what i found well, you are a very good writer it's, it's extraordinary you. because i find when the eyes can change you know you know who's there because the, the eyes changing you know, this is incredible thank you very much thank you Waiting thank for you the next very week. much i appreciate you saying that um i did want to add that 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 I also, you know, like my next goal, I find I recently retired from my full-time job as a journalist and now I get to play a little bit and I'm hoping to go to the Monroe Institute where I personally can have experience of stepping out and, and going to these places. Um, and that's kind of what that's all about for me, but thank you for your kind thank words. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that, that was great. Yeah. Channeling it. it that's what they say. Some say they just go to, somewhere else and um 
and the the spirit person comes through. So yeah, good question, Grace. Deborah. Yes. I'll try not to take too long because I know we all just could, would like to absorb everything with you. Like I, I could have a whole day with you. <laughs> I, have, I, I have a few things. First of all, I was like Peter. I thought it was so real that I really thought this was you going through these experiences that at the end of the book, when she dies, I'm like, well, that can't be her because she's coming on as a speaker, as the author. And I actually cried. I was crying. It really wow. touched me. Um, as a medium, I started out doing that in circles and practicing with friends and, and kind of doing those kind of things of letting spirit, spirit talk to me, knowing that reading it and seeing how fun it was for these individuals to, you know, dabble with spirit makes me want to do this. That's how much the book was inspired me like, oh, I, I want to get a group and, and let spirit speak to me, you know, use my body. Now, the third thing is I've done readings before where I connect with two people and they have switched. This person wanted to commit suicide. The other person wanted to come in and they call them step-ins. So it really has happened. And they carry almost the same name. And I was so confused. I'm like, who am I talking to? And then she explained, um, I'm so glad I'm talking to you because you're getting what I need to get. And I'm like, well, could you explain what I'm getting? And it was that they switched so for the rest of their life, not just a little bit. And then the, then the other part is the Monroe Institute. I actually worked with Anne and her superior who worked with the Monroe Institute with Edgar Casey, And that's where I got my certification as a healer is through them. Wow. So everything seems very connected when I read your book. And I just feel um, it's a privilege to know you. And I think you tapped into something that is going to open the minds of the healers and the mediums to take it to the next level. That's, that is, that would be beyond my wildest dreams because I do feel like it needs to be, I mean, I feel the same way about all of you being here because I know that's your area of interest and that you all believe in this stuff. And, and I don't believe the world can change unless we all spread this information out even more intently than we have um, because this is what the world needs to heal. And secondly, uh, because I told you my work as a journalist was always writing about these wonderful people every day, my faith in mankind is so much stronger than a lot of people I run into on the streets and in my family because they don't have the evidence that I do that there are so many just waiting for some sort of, um, I want to say, group energy. And I, I, and so the fact that you even said that this makes you want to do more in your work, I find not only am I honored by that, I, I'm delighted by that. It's thrilling to me. Yeah, and so my question was like the same as Grace's. I felt like what part of this was you? Because it, you wrote so well that, I felt that this was you speaking, that you were her. And, and so I was like, okay, but you answered that to Grace. So that was my question is like, where were you in this book? Because I am, I am Rebecca to, for the most part, like I feel like I inhabited her body, but I also, as you can all imagine, I, I feel like imaginatively we can all do that. And it makes us stronger and wiser as humans. So I took her as far as I could go. And I did. She and I kind of shared because um, she's very much like me. Um, I, I've never had her um, experiences, but I, you know, it's funny because I'm, as a journalist, I'm, I'm very firmly grounded. And so it's, it's, it's the work of this part of my life to connect with what's been left aside as I worked every day to make sure I got the facts right and to, to understand the story. And it's, you know, there's, there's, it's a, it's a lot of pressure to tell someone's story and do it right. Because especially in the newspaper, people don't get into the newspaper often. And when they do, if I've screwed up the details, um, that's so heartbreaking for both me and the person I'm writing about. So in any event, um, now, how does that, how does that, oh, how do, so um, now I can't remember, forgive me. So I got lost but in that circle. I would I say going, that you, you have a gift and you should start using it because in order to write this, this 
this is a gift and you understand the gift of the, the abilities. So I feel that you have it within you. You should tap into that. Thank you, Deborah. And, and I, and I, and I, I'm not being modest. What I, what I believe with my whole heart is that we all do in varying degrees. And, and, and because mine have been so suppressed, I guess that's what I was saying that at this part of my life, I'm hoping to not only to experience far more, but to be able to, to, to talk about it in ways that, influence these people who are feeling a little lost right now and, and worried about whether or not we're all going to be here tomorrow, you know? Thank you. Did that sound too grim? No, <laughs> no, that's great. Uh, Deborah, and I think I, I feel another book coming on for you now that you've retired from journalism. Well, I think. and you know, your you. book sales went up this month because we all bought a copy. Well, you sent me one, but, uh, and I thank you for that. So, Look at uh, that. Thank you, Peter. Then thank you for saying, Gary, and I, my sales have been so minimal. And I just keep, I, I'm like the little uh, ants with the rubber tree plant, you know, I just keep nudging it, hoping that, in fact, I'm working on a, a film that I might personally shoot myself in Lilydale with my iPhone, because as a oh, journalist, I do all my videography on an iPhone. And um so I literally, I have, because I keep sending it out and sending it out and, you know, nobody's paying much attention to me. And uh, I feel like that, what do they say about being on a dark stage, you know? Um, I need and, to hook you up with Stephen Simon. Well, I actually I did Stephen, I, cause I met him once in Buffalo um, when I was working as the editor of Holistic Magazine. So I reached out to him, but he's very, very concentrated and rightfully so on getting his own message out. He said he hasn't looked at a script in, I think, 20 years or so. So yeah. I, I didn't want to push him. And I just figure I because but he, he may give you um, some leads. Even, even oh. if he if he can't do it, he may point you in some good directions. So, you know what I'm going to so. do? I'm going to send him a copy of my book. and say, There you go. There you go. <laughs> um, let's keep moving along. Dell, any thoughts on the book? Any questions? Thank you, Gary. Uh, Michelle, I have to tell you that I'm new uh, to the group, and I just lost the love of my life in August. So um, oh, I'm experiencing... So experiencing the studies of the afterlife are new to me. And prior to August, um, you know, I probably wouldn't have picked up your book um, because I'm a big fan of Michael Conley and Joseph Wambaugh. And they were more related to the, my prior employment. But I couldn't put your book down when I started it. And I have to agree with Deborah and some of the others that it was just phenomenal. Um, and because um, the death of my wife is so fresh, I mean, some of the things that you wrote about and the experiences of Rebecca, um, when you're reading it, when, from my perspective, is, boy, I hope, hope this is true <laughs> because it's pretty exciting. And the mm -hmm. fact that and the other part is what really struck me was the exchanges between Rebecca and her, her husband. Was it Michael? Uh, Michael, yeah. Was heartbreaking the way you described it and his suggestion that he wanted to bring another female into the relationship. It, it, you could just feel the emotion there through your writing. It was exceptional. Um, aye, aye, aye. Thank you. Yeah. Um, what I would like to ask is there was an earlier question, and I can't remember the person's name, forgive me, but about the, the exchange of one person being used in another person's body. And then there was a, um, a sexual relationship between um, what was Albert's body and Sebastian and Rebecca. And um, you mentioned previously a couple of um, channeling individuals. Um, other, I mean, your experience with them and some of their experiences, could you describe that in, in a little more detail about, what you knew from your exchanges with those, I think her name was Roberts and his. Jean Roberts. Um, yeah. yeah, and the channeling experiences, because that, that's all brand new to me. So um, I'm interested in. I'm, I'm guessing there are several people here that could describe it probably better than me, but I'm going to do the best I can because I literally have immersed, you know, um, 
I kind of immersed myself in these stories for so long. Um, these true accounts from these channelers, I, I, because I find it so fascinating. Because when I'm frustrated or fearful, I turn on some um, Esther Hicks channelings because she makes me laugh. And, and sometimes her answers are profound. And I don't know if she's actually channeling a group of spirits, but, but she could be because it's extraordinary to hear the wisdom just come pouring out of her without thought. And if any of you have ever tried to talk at length to a crowd of people who are seeking your advice, to see that these words come out. So, and, and the process, the way I understand it is you go into a meditation or a relaxation and as it's been described, and then the information drops in, in blocks of words. And so the channeler uses their words to interpret the blocks that are cut, that are dropping into their consciousness. And, and that's how the, the wisdom is offered very often from what is described as a group of uh, spiritual entities. And, which aligns perfectly with people who've had near-death experiences, millions and millions of people who've had them and describe them very often as sitting among a group of spiritual guides. So it all, it, it kind of connects that way for me again. And I think it keeps going back to my being a journalist and, and spending my whole life getting my whole adult life, getting the accounts of people's stories for the newspaper, and then hearing so many of these accounts from people who, who write practically the same thing about channeling or their near-death experiences, it, it cannot not be true. I haven't actually had one myself, but it cannot not be true. And so when, when for instance, that you said, I think, Grace, that you said um, it's, it felt real, and, and Peter said it too, um, what, what that is actually is it, it's almost my channeling of all of this information, uh, all, the, all these real accounts, and, and in crafting them into a story that maybe, be more, maybe will be more palatable to some readers someday who aren't as we are um, so accustomed to these topics. And it's interesting that you say that because that these are new to you um, because I've, I, I'm, I'm always interested to hear what a person who isn't, hasn't been researching and studying these ideas their whole life, uh, whether or not they find them terrifying or completely so hard to believe. And I, and and I think that your attitude, especially now with the, the loss of, of your wife, um, your wife, right? You said your wife, not, your, your yeah, wife. I, I found hope through your writing um, that at least at some point, maybe I would be able to experience a hug or an embrace and know it's her. So yeah. it was beautiful. So thank you. Thank you, and um, and I feel like that that there's a very good chance of that happening, and you'll know when it does. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. thanks, Del. Um, now I'd like to call on Sherry Pearl, who actually used to sit with Jane Roberts and Seth. No. And, oh, yes. Sherry's got yeah. a colorful background. So, Sherry, go ahead. Hi. Um, and I will tell you, uh, Delwyn, that um, I did with my own eyes experience seeing Seth enter Jane, take over her body. And in her case, she would have absolutely no idea what he said. She'd go into trance. He would take her glasses off and throw them down. <laughs> and he would speak to us. He, he was very funny also and very eloquent, but he, this was a very small woman. And when Seth would come through, her neck would bulge and the mannerisms and the voice and even the accent was not Jane. There's no question in my mind that another personality spoke through Jane. When she would come out of trance, she'd say, what did he say? Because she was completely not aware and we would start to say, well, he said this, and if someone got it wrong, he'd come right through and say, you are incorrect. <laughs> that is not what I said. So there was quite an interaction, but there's no question in my mind at this point that spirit can do that. But just 
listen to the thoughts that go through your own mind in your own voice when you call out to her and just ask her, how are you, sweetheart? And just send that out and just listen to what goes through your own mind. You'll hear, I love you, honey, or I'm there. You'll think it's just your imagination because it comes through that same window. Um, I'll be speaking at the Global Gathering on Sunday, this Sunday at 3, and if you can join that, I'll be talking a lot about how that comes through to us and because uh, of my own book, Lost and Found, based on losing my son in the flesh and finding him in the spirit. But indeed, um, I'm glad that you have read Michelle's book because she's very right on, and I didn't find anything in all my years, over 50 years of studying this field i didn't find her off the wall or in any way not you know having her own accurateness what i wanted to say to michelle is that although i'm sure gary told me you were a journalist and it was um fiction i just must have blotted that out because i'm reading it and i'm reading it and all of a sudden things start hitting chords with it that i thought Oh my God, is this for real? I mean, it, I mean, like that someone, because it really rang true for me with the healer that helped me so much when I was dying as a young girl and now is my guide and spirit. And there is a connection so profound that so writes me, that just so sets me on my feet, that when I read that, I, I was just blown away by... Um, what I believe to be true, which is we have these relationships that go on unbeknownst to us because we dumb down so much to get into the flesh, you know, <laughs> and it maybe is. Hard. So I think what you've done is great. And I do hope that it gets out there because it is a fun way to be introduced to these ideas because they can be, you know, a lot to take on. So it, 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 it was wonderfully done. Thank you so very much. Michelle. Thank you. You guys are like bombed in my soul. I, it's it's <laughs> hearing these words that 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 you found it real and that you found it true. It did. Um, I cannot tell you after the years that that I've um, that I've had it out there, thinking I just must. This must have just been. Maybe it was the thirty readers that needed to see it. And you know and what? Honestly, it's a hard. If these are hard. I mean, my books have been on the market. Healing from the inside out, which is I re. I, I put it out again in 2011 because I had to update it because although my healing story stayed the same, my philosophy changed over the years, you know, mm -hmm. so I, I re but it is so hard to move self-published books from my perspective, unless you're just going to keep going out there and pushing and pushing and pushing. I, it, it, I've had a, look, I have a number of books out there and I also think that they, those who've read them have gotten some help from them. But it's hard to, it, it, it's not the easiest thing. But then Seth would say, that's a belief. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I don't want to sit and say that, but my experience has been, it, you know, I think they're very valuable. But it's, if I were trying to make a living off of my books. <laughs> well, I guess that's the point for all of us, you know, is that, you know, we have to let go of the outcome. We have to do the work, let go of the outcome. So that's really what I'm trying to do. It is really understanding that as in all of life, if you want to have peace, you just Go do the next thing. That's right. I'm so with you. So nice to and, meet and you. And the fact is that is I keep going back to my God, the world is so crazy right now. That's uh, and that's why I love the the afterlife report because it it gives me hope in every story, and um, I find that uh, so comforting. Well, I will tell you that right now people that I'm very close to are going through some very hard times and I, it's been a real test of my faith. And if it was not for my knowledge of a bigger picture, I don't know how any of us could take daily life on the earth oh today. My gosh. I that never thought things would ever be this crazy. And I rely on that, on that, you know, knowledge. And sometimes, you know, the doubting mind doubts and I'm like, well, am I just crazy? But I'd rather be crazy and believe what I believe. If sanity means accepting war is the way we solve our problems and destroying our planet is the way to live, then I think I'll take insanity any day. 
Well, here's the obnoxious part of my personality yeah. is that because, <laughs> because I know how all the, the, the good people out there, because that was my endless work every day was writing these wonderful stories oh. that people would say, oh, they're so beautiful. And then they'd go read about the, the bad news, which is fine. The balance is great. And I, and I am certain, I love to look at the thousands of people who, every time I go to a spiritual uh, 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 video on YouTube uh, of the leaders of the movements of, of uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, there are so many people working for good and you'll see that they have thousands and thousands of views. So always remember, I think, and that's what I keep telling myself Balance. and my children to the point where they go like, yeah, we know there's good people in the world, but mom, what about... Um, and I, I and I feel like those good people, and, and they are, the vast majority of them are silent because they're all kind of watching and waiting. And, and again, so that's, um, that's why I get my hope from this kind of stories that I shared in my book and, and the kinds of stories that we all enjoy in the afterlife report. And so, I'll, I'll add a note that Seth said, because since I know you were like Seth, he said to us, you know, you worry so much about your world, and I understand that, he said. But please understand that, you know, you've had the ability to destroy the earth a thousand times over for a long time, but you haven't. Because all of you who love life and love the earth help to withhold your world. Mm. And so I think it's what you're talking about, the balance. Nice. You know, and since our basic news doesn't report that most of the time, we get like fixated and forgetting. Exactly. But we are, we're still standing, right? And look around, look at all the wonderful people we each know. I just keep thinking there's this minuscule amount of people. And I, I don't want to be naive. I know there's people out there who are devoted to um, the kind of ideas that aren't healthy in our world. And yet I am also deeply aware because of the work I did every day for so long about the good. And, and you know, the background message of all of this, it's all about love. Yes. And, and if you're coming from love, Everything else falls into place, doesn't I, it? I love that, and it sounds it sounds like way too simplistic, and yet it is the answer to all things. Uh, it is it again, is. and that's the kind of thing I was hoping to sneak in. I really was just trying to say this is. I, I wanted people to be drawn into the story, then come to the awareness that um, it is only about love. That's it, Jane. How about you? Thank you, Sherry. Well. Everyone has said everything that I wanted to say, but I can say that you had me at Charlie. Yeah. Really? You had me at Charlie, and how beautiful the symmetry of ending with Lily Beth. Um, my, three of my siblings have children on the spectrum, and I have a very huge place in my heart for them. And I also have gone to Lilydale. Mm. I'm reading at the stump. At the stump. It's a beautiful okay. stump in the woods where people gather in these ancient woods. Yep. That's awesome. My great, my great aunt came to me. She passed away to the other side um, at 102. So it was nice to hear from her. And um, I really, I'm like, the touchstones were there and it was refreshing for me because you also had a maturity. Um, I felt that the person that the woman writing this book knew mature love had lived and you, you, just spoke like you lived it the heartache and the possibility um and the resilience and i wanted in on all of it and um i love the way you you use the butterfly analogy you snuck it in there throughout um, I thought you were so smart, <laughs> rich, uh, human. How's your driving, by the way? 
You got I'm it. a terrible driver. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm driving in there. But I just, like everyone said, um, I felt as if you actually experienced everything in the book that you wrote. You embodied, um, or I thought you did, the book, the, the experiences in the book. And um, I want to thank you. And I want to read your next one. And it, I'm just, you know, I'm sick of reading. I'm not sick, but I mean, it was a mature, there was a maturity about it. And since I'm in that mature phase <laughs> of life, oh, I was like, great. I love this woman, you know, write some more. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jane. I Again, I, I am overwhelmed. Um, you, you are the most gracious and um, 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 kind and um, thoughtful group of readers I've, I've ever had the pleasure to be in front of. And um, I appreciate, I feel um, that if, I, if, if no one else ever reads it, the fact that you guys have enjoyed it is, is just, it's thrilling. Thank you. And, and here I was reticent. And you probably remember this from our first communication, Michelle, about presenting a fiction book, because I go so much into the old mediums and what they did and physical mediumship where actual, you know, materializations occurred. And, and so this was, I, I was nervous about going to a novel on the subject, but not now. <laughs> I was kind of nervous too. Well. And, <laughs> and I, have to, I have to say, page three, I was like, oh, this woman knows how to write. Yeah, this is going to be a good book. And that oh, was when I decided you. to write you and go, yeah, let's do this. So I was surprised when you said yes. I, I was thinking about that today. I get a lot of no's. You know, I get a lot of agents who don't write back or people just go, sorry, not, not interested. And so when you wrote back, I, I was. Um, you literally, you didn't just make my day. I think you made my year. Oh, good. Again, good. because I always thought that if I could get this in the hands of people who thought as I do and who understood the things that I've spent my life trying to learn and, and, and who are certain that we, that we live on in, in, in not in a necessarily religious way, but in a kind of global energetic spiritual way that we of course live on. We, with all this evidence, how could we not? Yeah. And, yeah, um, yeah. and it wouldn't make much sense if we didn't, would it? No, it wouldn't make any sense at all if we didn't. It, not at all. But I have to ask Jane, why did you ask about the driving? Because I do joke that I'm a little like Mr. Magoo. You know, things crash behind me and in front of me, but they kind of around me. Um, you driving around a lot. <laughs> oh, because I move like uh, <laughs> going here, going there. You know, with urgency. You know. Oh yes. I see what you mean. Yes, that's that's actually how I drive. But um, um, thank you for asking about my driving. I'm not that bad of a driver. I still get to keep my license. There's no one yet going. Should she really still be driving? So that's that's a positive. Thank you. It is. Thank Patricia, you. did you uh, read the book? Yes, I did. I totally enjoyed it. I had problems putting it down. I went from chapter, I went one more chapter, oh, one more chapter. Everything around me just stopped. I just was so involved in all the characters. I absolutely loved it. I just am so happy to be here right now. <laughs> <laughs> We're happy to have you. Thank you. So, Patricia, anything else that you wanted to ask Michelle or that was it? She's... Are you frozen? No, that, I, just, I just wanted to know. I, I totally enjoyed the book, and it was very well done. That's all. I'm, thank Great. you for writing that book. Thank you so Great. much. Thank you. Great. I have to tell you, Patty is new to all of this. So when I was at her house this afternoon, she's like, oh, my gosh, I'm so new with all of this. Is this real? <laughs> and so she couldn't wait to be on here tonight. So I'm just letting you know, she's new at this, too. That is so interesting to know, and, and I hope none of it scared you. And I and I and I I, I love that 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 you you have said you felt it was real, felt it was real because 
To me, it is real. To me, every bit of it is, it is real. It, it's just I took other people's stories and merged them together into a single story. But except for the part about where exactly Albert went when he was when he had loaned his body to Sebastian, because you'd have to be Albert to know exactly that. Um, I, uh, you know, every bit of it has come from true accounts. And um, so I'm really glad. And, and I want you to, and, and I guess for someone who's new to this, um, if you walk away from here knowing that we have so much more potential to do, to do good on the planet for not only ourselves, but, but all of the other humans who are here with us. I mean, and we animals. Are, yeah. And the and animals, animals and the animals yeah. and the plants and yes, all of that. Yes. I'm doing a documentary because I'm a journalist and I, I do a lot of videos for the stories with my phone. Now I'm doing a documentary um, by almost accident about a donkey rescue farm. And uh, it turns out donkeys are very cool. If you ever get the opportunity to meet one. Um, and by way of that, I'm saying it's the older I get, the more I'm aware that like, there, there's so much alive and full of love and connecting us. And it's a delight to, to be able to put words out there that help people get that. Great. Susan. Thank you, Patricia. You're muted. You're muted. There you are. Hi, Susan. You're still muted. About now. Yeah, you're good. Okay. Um, yeah, hopefully you all hear me because my, as always, my internet is unstable. I'm sorry, Michelle. I live in Southern Georgia. Um, <laughs> we don't have internet here. I don't think, <laughs> um, but yes, your book was brilliant. Um, uh, I have mm -hmm. to say that when I first saw what Gary's choice was, I was hesitant. Okay. Because I, I thought, Fiction. Okay. That's an interesting choice. And I'm thinking to myself, well, I can grow, you know, I can, I can expand a little stretch a little bit. And then I looked at it a little more and I'm like, a love story. Hmm. <laughs> Not only is it fiction, but it's a love story. A love story. I know. And, you know, when you think about love stories, you think about like, you know, those, those cupboards with the women, like, you know, know. like what, like falling out of their dress and, you know, <laughs> well, I had some fun with that too. So yeah, I know what you mean. I understand. So, and I, and thinking, I too would have gone like, really? Although I, um, I have looked for a book like this. I mean, I, I read a lot of fiction. I, I mostly read true accounts because, because those are what give me the real hope about, you know, I, I read true accounts right. of everything to understand people more, to, to get a better sense of the world. But um, every now and then a good fiction story knocks me off my feet too. And I, I love that feeling. Um, yeah. But I also yeah. wondered, would it matter if these were all based on true accounts? If, if, you know, to the reader, especially someone new like Patricia or Adele, you know, would it matter if they were based on true stories, if that would make it more... I don't know, potent or hopeful. And um, so anyway, so you read it and you, I read how it. long did it take for you to go like, okay. It wasn't long. I mean, I got sucked in really early and it was really, um, it was very surprising to me, but I felt very uplifted by your book. Oh, I think somebody else said that too, that it just makes you feel good. And it makes you feel like, oh, yes, this is all the stuff that we talk about. This is all the stuff that we believe. This is all the stuff that is here, like in a human story. And it, it really, it was wonderful. I loved it. Um, I have to tell you that my favorite quote, um, and I'll give you a little background on why it's my favorite quote. But you know how we've all been talking about how it's been like really terrible lately like in the last couple of years, COVID, one thing after another, terrible news everywhere you look. Um, and a lot of people are having their own personal traumas on top of that, their own mm -hmm. personal misfortunes. Yeah, you know, um, I've had, some of you know, I've had a crazy two years and on top of everything that's going on. And 
I, um, I remember thinking to myself, you know, this earthly existence is really a lot more than I bargained for. Mm-hmm. And would it be so bad? Like if something just happened to me and I got to go to my heavenly reward and I, (laughs) and I could enjoy the fruits of the afterlife and seeing all my people and my guides and, and all of that. And my favorite quote was, I believe it was Sebastian who said, Rebecca, you do not want to hurry your life to its finish. It's like leaving before you've opened up all your presents. And, uh, I felt like, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of truth in that. So nicely said, Susan. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for thank but you for I, I loved it. Thank you for writing it. I I I wish I could take the credit. You know, we all know that 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 you know when we're doing the work we're put here to do, it just kind of comes. And and honestly, it hasn't come again. So I'm kind of waiting. I like to, you know, I've, as I said, I've recently left my full-time job as a journalist and I'm kind of waiting for my marching orders. And I'm determined at this very short period of, you know, like this time to really just kind of learn to listen and to tune in. And to, to so, so these, these lovely words you're all saying about my writing, I, I, I it, believe me, I, I, can't hear that enough because everyone has insecurities about their work, especially the quiet reception that this book has received. Um, um, in any events, um, so that's that's I can't take the credit, but I'm very very happy that um, my efforts um, have touched you guys. I know I'm repeating yeah. myself, but it's uh-huh. really great to to hear that you've heard the, that you that you feel me, you know, that you get me. And that this story touched you in the way that it's touched me. And today I was thinking like, what if I ever never write another book? Um, and this would have to be like what I leave. This is the story I leave behind. And um, geez, I hope I write another book. Cause I, I you know, it, it would, especially now that I have some time on my hands, but if I don't, um, this would be my, my gift to the world or, or my words to the world. I'm not sure everybody would see it as a gift, but um, again, I appreciate that you guys can see that it might, that it, that, that I can see that it has touched you. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Great. Great. Carol, let's, I'm I'm rushing along a little bit because our hour's coming. We can go over a little, but I don't want to keep people too late. I do still need. It's short. (laughs) I, I still need to present the book for next month and you're welcome to, hang along to Michelle and see what we're into. So go ahead, Carol. I'm sorry. Well, Michelle, I'm really glad that you believed as that young reporter many years ago. I thought this is a beautiful love story. I'm telling you, tears came <laughs> into my eyes. I can't tell you how many times in the book it was. And, and really, I didn't think it was fiction. I mean, it it was just seemed so real to me. And when I was about two thirds through the book, I was like, "No, this this is real." And so I went back looking, you know, to see for sure that it was fiction. But it was so believable, and, and there was so many neat twists and turns to it. And um, I've never read a story like that before. So to me, it was very unique and. Um, and I think you were one of the best chocolates that came out of the box. <laughs> oh, my question for you is, uh, when are you going to start a new one? Um, thank you. I hope soon. I, honestly, because I haven't had this kind of encouragement, uh, I almost thought that it was a wasted effort. Oh. I have 30 lovely comments on, on Amazon, and I figure, well, those 30 people must have needed to read it. Maybe I'm supposed to go on and do something else. And for all I knew, it was a, doc- a documentary about rescuing donkeys. Um, it, because I haven't had this type of a reception. I haven't sat with a room full of people who said, I got it. I understood it. And I enjoyed it. And, and that's- you know, I, I have to listen to my team because when they say, yeah, go ahead and do the fiction book, because I was really nervous about doing a fiction book. Um, on here, uh, that they know what they're talking about. 
Oh, I thought you meant you were writing one. You, 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 you took to your guidance and they said, Oh, do well, what? every book I do, I ask my team, is this a good book to present? Is that a good book to present? And they guide me in that direction. Oh, that's beautiful. And that is actually something I'm trying to do, by the way, is in this part of my life is really listen this, you know, in there's some benefit to being our, you know, kind of this, this, part of the life where you have maybe some a little more free time. And um, I love that your guide said it, that go for the fiction. Go Thank for the fiction for book, me, please. Because I, I really have strayed away from that. And, uh, but three pages in, I was hooked. So that's um, amazing to me. And Carol, think I, I didn't mean to cut you off. I just, um, you know, in terms of writing another one, I really didn't. I've never had this type of a reception because I, I've never been able to get it in the hands of people who believe as I do or who are fascinated and inspired by the same things that I think all of us are inspired by. And well, now having it, talked to all of you and having heard that it touched you and it made you cry, my God, you know, that um, that it, when you're when you're writing a story and someone says they've reacted that emotionally to it, yeah, it yeah. means um, I can't even tell you what it means to me in terms of maybe writing another one now because I think okay, so maybe I did accomplish what I set out to do was to touch people's hearts to give them a sense of my uh, yeah. deep belief that we don't die. Yeah, and, and most of us, Michelle, are not believers. We're knowers. We know it. Ha- it's real. Right. right. Well, you're you're a very unique group of people. I think that's you know that goes without saying. So. Um, but again, I can't, it, it, it's, it's lovely that, um, you guys, that you seem to, doesn't anybody have anything bad to say? Nancy, uh, do you have anything to say at all? All right. Here's the bad. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have not read your book yet. I'm excited to read it. Um, I feel very, um, excited and really joyful that people that well I, I'll say I'm, I'm a budding medium I've been training and stuff so um, I can inter- use your book to introduce you know my belief system like to my sons who are you know 28 and 29 years old and so I'm I'm going to go that way I'm going to read it first but I'm going to go that way and um it's like Dell, I can say through experience, I've been able to um, experience that hug from spirit and also to help others. Um, I've gotten the hug for others, but they also get it. So um, it's really cool and exciting. And I'm looking forward to you getting yours. Um, let's see. Uh, um, oh, donkeys are phenomenal. <laughs> I didn't know that until I met they, some. They, you know, think about their life in, in service, and they're just honored to be that for us, and that's really what we need to be, right, as, as humans. Um, and I also am very glad that you are listening, and I dot, and your, your book is definitely a gift to the world, but even a bigger gift is coming because through inspirational writing is how your next book's coming. Um, and there's not going to be any fiction. It's all going to be brought to you and you putting pen to paper. So I wish you well. I just feel it. I know it. It's like, it's beaming true. Um, yeah, girl, you got it going on. It's, Thank you, Nancy. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, honestly, after you've all told me that you thought it was real, I feel like I kind of cheated you by, by when you get to the end and you go like, this didn't really happen. I'm, I'm, I either have to put something in the front of the book that says, this is a fiction story. I love that you think it's real because, again, to me, it feels very real. But Nancy, thank you for telling me that I'm going to be writing inspirational fiction. I think that um, uh, I... I that may be the next way to go uh, for me. Again, I, you have no idea how this has uh, supercharged me, this, this gathering with all of you. So um, thank you. And I thank you so much. 
You're muted, Gary. Uh, Susie McDougal, did you read this book or did you just join us on the? I've just joined you, but I do have a couple of comments. And my first comment is, um, I don't know why everybody's getting so tied up about it being fiction, because fiction is a really good doorway to the non-initiated. And I'm coming from the perspective yeah. of been tossing some balls around recently with a very strong Catholic person who's who's torn between where spiritism sort of says and what the church has taught her and, and things like that. So I find that using fiction as a doorway is it's a non threatening place for people who have very strong convictions that are the other way. Um, I also have a suggestion, Michelle, I am tied up with a couple of writers groups and um a lot of the libraries, and I'm in Australia, obviously, so I don't know if in America the same thing happens, but a lot of the writers' groups and libraries have gotten together and the seniors will have a session at some stage through the week down there where writers will introduce their books to them and obviously sell them as well. Um, but that might be an avenue where you can get it out differently to, like, you know, if, you, if it wasn't fiction it probably wouldn't go. But because it is fiction, that sort of an area to take it out to can be quite a good way to, to go with it. That's um, so wonderful advice. An idea to think about. I actually, um, before, you, before, you, uh, before you came on, I did mention that because I'm a journalist, I'm, I'm used to writing true stories. And because these, this fiction story is based on true accounts, I'm, I'm delighted to hear that it comes across as real. Um, but I, I do love, I, and, I, and I, I believe that that's kind of the why I went to fiction, because I couldn't understand why people, this, all this information is available, and people, they turn away from the topic of death and dying when it's such an, if, if they knew more about it, it could change their lives, that they really knew, not just religious, go to church on Sunday and go like, mm -hmm, there's going to be an afterlife and we'll think about that later. But if they really knew the stories that are told, and that's why I did say that it's kind of, it was kind of my way to maybe sneak in these ideas. So they're not so frightening. And, and I, and I, now that I've I recently retired from my work as a journalist full time, I can maybe take the time and go to the libraries and find some other audiences. Cause, but I, I may not have had, I not met with you all tonight because I was, really thinking, you know, this book is, is not really touching people the way I'd hoped it would. And yet each of you seems to have seen something in it that I was hoping that, that people would find. Michelle, no accidents. You were supposed to be here tonight. I, it's stunning to me. So yes, I, I have to agree with you. So we have two more people, if you can keep your comments, questions short, so I have time to introduce the book and we don't keep people too late. Steve, do you, um, did you read the book or do you have any? Um, you know? No, I've been real busy this month, but um, as I was saying the other day, I've read probably, I don't know, hundreds of books on <laughs> metaphysics and mediumship and my sister's a medium and I'm steeped in this stuff. So I mostly read nonfiction. But the other day I said, I'm, I'm kind of bored with nonfiction. So I just got your book and I'm really looking forward to uh, immersing myself in it. And I, I'm going to start a, a deaf uh, cafe uh, this month locally here in Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin. And uh, mm -hmm. I may introduce the book to some of the participants there. These are people that are all going to be discussing deaf and their thoughts and their fears and whatever. I don't know, whatever their thoughts are. So uh, we, well, this we, can't way, push, we can't push. No, no, no. That's, that's, again, I wanted people to see the joy in death and dying. And, and I love the idea of a death cafe. We have one in Niagara Falls, New York, and um, okay. they have cupcakes and they have laughter. And, and honestly, uh, like Gary said, it's really, it's not even, you know, what did you say, Gary? It's not dying. It's just continuing to live. Yeah, no nice. afterlife, just life. Just life. Okay. Now, really the way I look at it now, it's, I call it the no. greater reality. I'm not going to call it the afterlife anymore. Yeah, yeah. and Michelle, those cupcakes will kill you. The cupcakes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, but you be smiling, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, Susie Bennett, you hadn't had a chance to make a comment. 
Okay, Susie will make this quick. Um, I am usually, I stay away from novels um, and I have been for probably 20 years. It's all got to be factual. I've got to have the evidence. The, but um, I, I really found this profound. Um, your writing is, is, is phenomenal. It's, 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 um, I love the fact that you, I hate to use the word, you threw in the soul, the soul pods, the soul groups, um, with Albert and, um, Sebastian and Rebecca, um, I thought that was very interesting and I'm, um, I'm just, I was, I was thrilled at the end cause I thought, Oh God, please don't let it be over. Oh. And then it was Rebecca's epi epilogue. And, um, that was a, that was a tearjerker. Um, 97 years old and, um, I mean, the whole book, honestly, was it felt extremely fa factual. Um, all the di different aspects of Sebastian, um, how um, I could kind of see it coming, how Sebastian was going to have to leave and Albert was going to step in and... Um, it, it had a very happy, glorious ending, I thought. Um, and interestingly, last week on a webinar, um, I didn't know whether Lilydale is a real place. And there was a woman that was actually from Lilydale. And I was kind of like, oh, my gosh. Oh, <laughs> So um, kudos, and I'm going to go to Amazon, and and I'm going to, um, however you say, rate rate your your book, give you um, the stars or however it thank you, you to um, to get more people to to buy to to. I don't know, maybe, maybe that'll help. So, Thank you, Susie. I appreciate that. Um, this helps. So your comments help. That, yeah. will, that motivates me to get out there and, and push yeah. the story more rather yeah, than to kind of over, leave it to overly languish. Thrilled, overly thrilled. Um, so um, you just keep on doing what you're doing. <laughs> Thank you so much. I, I've enjoyed it. Did everyone talk? I think everybody's had a chance to talk. Yeah. I just want to invite you. My email is it's, is uh, at, at the end of the book, and I would love to hear from any of you um, who have your own stories to share. And I offer to be the beta reader for any of the books that you're working on. So it would be my pleasure. And uh, again, yeah, I cannot it. tell you how much this is, has helped me to feel the energy to, to move forward, to continue to try to get this book out here, maybe make that little movie at Lilydale on my cell phone, because I think that will be fun and doable. And I do see it as a movie in my head. So and thank you for well, your comments, every single one of them. Gary, um, Peter has asked yeah. a question in chat. Is there a way well, of contacting you, Michelle? Do you have a website or an email? Yes, I, I actually... Um, I do have a website, although I had trouble. They uh, somewhere something happened in WordPress where my website address got changed. Um, I do have um, my email is mcdeluca at aol .com. so it's m m is in Mary Mich you know, or Michelle mcdeluca at aol .com. and um, um, my I can't remember my Can you new check the chat. Um, That's right. Pardon me. Can you check, check in the, the chat, chat and see if that that's correct? Right, that I've written oh, it down correctly. And I, I just... Oh, there it is. Yes, MC DeLuca. Thank you. I should have had my chat open. 
Um, yes, I did. I, I lost my website, so I would say it to you, but I, I can't. Uh, yeah, I, lost I, I also have a, 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 a Facebook page called Body, Mind, Spirit TV, where I was when I was uh, during COVID, I had some free time and I, I, just, I started a um, natural health channel um, so I could share these stories. So it's and, Body, uh, Mind, Spirit? It's Body, Dash, Mind, Dash, Spirit, Dash, TV. Body dash mind it. Body. Let me see. It's body. You'd think I would know. I'm a little embarrassed. Um, yeah. I just I just want to add one more thing that when you're saying how you have your you're thinking about doing the the filming in Lilydale, that's that's spirit that spirit telling you. Well, I think, it's, I think we'll all agree on that. I don't know. I, yeah, and I, I also wanted to mention to everyone, uh, there's a great film on Amazon Prime. It's, uh, you can rent it for like $3 called No One Dies in Lilydale. <laughs> and it gives you a, a kind of a tour of the whole town, some mediums, their readings. It's, it's worth the view. So... But it Michelle's going to make a better if, one. If any of you ever get that close to my house, I will buy you lunch if you call, if you contact me. So, um, well, I, you know, I've got like three writer friends in your area. So um, retirement is looming closer and closer. In fact, I applied for Social Security today. Oh, my. So, so uh, when I get to New York, we'll have lunch. I'll buy yep. you lunch. Oh, okay. I, there you. is nothing I love more than meeting people of like minds and sharing my part of the world with them. Niagara Falls, where my newspaper is. I've, I worked at the Niagara Gazette in Niagara Falls for the last 15 years. And that's a crazy little town that needs lots of spiritual assistance. And, oh, yeah. Uh, I spent a summer in Buffalo. So there was a great line from a play. I know. Do you <laughs> I know the line? Chorus line. Um, oh, yes, it's redundant. Chorus line. Uh, Something about spent, being in I Buffalo. I spent a year in Buffalo. I considered suicide, but I realized that would be redundant. Look, and you know the whole line. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's not that bad. I kind of no, like it's it not. Bad. It was a unique experience, and I and I loved you know going over the bridge. Yeah, to Niagara Canada. Falls is worth the trip, and then Lilydale being right down the road. For those of us who love to explore the idea that there is something more coming, something more wonderful than we can even imagine, that's a fun place to go. Yeah, that yeah, is. So I, um, I can see you and Jane meeting up. Jane. Hey, Jane, you're muted. Oh, Jane, down there. Yeah, I went with two girlfriends. Uh, to, we flew to Toronto, we rented a car, and we came down to Lilydale, and we stayed just outside of uh, Lily Dale. But yes, I want to go back. Oh, and Jane, please call me. Seriously, any any of you, I um, will be your tour guide. I won't make a pest of myself, but I'll make sure that you have an extra good time. Well, thank you. Thank you. Michelle, you've been so sweet. Thank you so much for being our guest author um, this month. It's been delightful. It's and um, absolute. there was something in it for everyone. And when spirit tells me to present a book, I'm doing it because if they ever give me one that everybody hates, that hasn't happened yet in over a year now. Um, but if they ever give me one, I can blame it on spirit. So I um, like well, <laughs> <laughs> they won't. Oh, I just so here's again, the book. Thankful. Here's the book for the next two months because it is a 510 page book. And it was really prompted by Grace asking, you know, what's it like on the other side? You know, you know what, what are the different planes of existence like? So this book, I'm on my second read of. I personally cannot put it down, even on a second read. And it takes you and it draws from many, many different sources. And it's uh, by Ian Lawton, L-A-W-T-O-N. There it is, Afterlife, A Modern Guide to the Unseen Realms. Now, I do want to ask everyone to read the first 260 pages, so 500 for this month. And then we get the really, the icing on the cake are the 
uh, upper planes. Now, the, the first 260 pages, it's going to take you through all the lower realms. None of you are going to be there because these are people that are really depraved. And we know some of them on the planet because it's a world of many, many different types of people. So, but it's nice to have a roadmap and to know what's there. <coughs> Excuse me. So if you find it initially when he starts getting into the realms, a little heavy, just stick with it because I, I took you far enough if you go 260 pages that you're into the upper astral realms where most people end up, which is pretty nice, you know, from, from the description. So, and then you get into the higher realms and the words start falling away because there are no words. But he does his best to give descriptions of that. So we'll read half the book this month and half the book next month because I don't expect any, any of you, I pretty much dropped my life to read a 510 page book in four days. Um, but, uh, yeah, well, I didn't do anything else, Jane. I just, <laughs> did, I just read the book. Uh, there was snow, I couldn't do much, so I re read the book. But I think you're gonna enjoy it. I think it is one of the most comprehensive descriptions of the planes of existence and he doesn't describe them all because there are thousands. There are subplanes to each plane of existence. So, but it gives a great overview, and I think you'll all find it quite interesting. So, 260 pages. Well, I don't have the author here next month. He's in England. So, uh, but we'll have an, a, a, a great discussion. And Michelle, you're welcome to join us every month. Thank you. Month. I appreciate you saying that. Yeah. It's, that sounds like a fascinating book. And I haven't stumbled across that one yet. So it's an extra bonus prize for me to hear about it. Well, so, you've been our bonus you. prize tonight. <laughs> and I really want to thank you. Um, thank you. So. Thank you all. You've, it, this has been life changing for me. I cannot tell you. Excellent. Thank you for your guides too, Steve, for making it happen. You mean Gary? No, Gary. That is, I, I, I did mean Gary. Is there even a Steve with us? Yes, yeah, Steve. Yeah. There's Steve. <laughs> anyway, Gary and Steve, thank you both. All right. Well, and you guys, you love you all, as always. And uh, this, uh, this makes my month every month, having all of you here together. So um, sending you lots of love, healing, light, and um, have a wonderful month, okay? Thank you, Michelle. I hope that when you're this side, you're Thank you, Gary. happy to help you. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thank you. See you next month. Thank you. Thank See you, you all. Bye. See you. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. And Michelle, Thank if you. I include all the, um, the whole um, tape, it's going to be really long. Um, you know what? I'd like to send Michelle the whole thing. Yeah. I don't know what we're doing with the rest of it. Maybe Wendy might like to view it just to get a feel for how the book club's going. Oh, and if you talk to Wendy, Karen, uh, tell her disregard my uh, email. She's I found it. I, she already oh, rang me in a panic. <laughs> okay. I found another workaround. Every month they keep changing things and I have to figure out a workaround their codes. So we're all good. And yeah. I, at least I figured it out. And so, okay. Okay. well, thanks, Karen, for recording um, it. I'd like to get a copy. You just send yeah, it to me well, and I'll, Michelle, I'll... Well, Wendy won't. We don't... Um, we try to get everything compressed into half an hour because most people won't go longer than 20 minutes, even yeah. interested. You know, our statistics are not very good. People will not watch an hour presentation. So oh, were you... Were you planning to put it on um, on YouTube then? No, no, no. I'm just telling you what the statistics are from okay. people who actually come on to Wendy's YouTube. And there's a, there's um, three breaks. One's at 10 minutes, one's at 20 minutes, and one's at half an hour. Anything mm -hmm. longer than that, people just do not tune into. So we try so to... You are, in, so we try you are to talking about... You are talking about putting it on YouTube then. No, no, I, I, I have not this at all. I mean, I haven't even been given permission by Michelle to do anything with that yet. Oh, my goodness. And you are so welcome. So, I would you know, actually, um, 
you know, that's all I'm doing. I'm just sort of saying that, that that's the statistics that we've found on our previous um, tapes that we've done. Um, the people who just don't want to listen for an, uh, for an hour. So everyone who does their podcasts of an hour, they've lost their listeners long yeah. before that. So, you know, I'm, 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 I'm just saying that, that, that um, I've taped the whole lot. In fact, I'll...